um, asylum seekers and the policy surrounding those seeking asylum is one that's very close to Brunswick United's heart. So the third question is, um, as our elected official, what do you intend to do about our nation's treatment of asylum seekers? Thank you. I have to admit that I personally find it incredibly hard to work out what to do other than not treat people inhumanely. And um, also to look at the question of why people in fact need to flee from their countries and see Australia play a much more active role in, um, in trying to broker peace, improve economic well-being and uh, generally making people's lives um, better so that they in fact can, can live in the countries of their choice and of their birth or wherever they wish to, to live. Um, the other aspect, I guess, of asylum seekers is that it, um, with increasing climate change, the, the number of people who will be, who will be seeking refuge and, and, and suffer from other places is likely to increase very, very dramatically um, if we continue to, to fail to deal with, with that issue. Um, in Vietnam, for example, in the Mekong Delta, um, about half that area is likely to be flooded um, under the current temperatures and uh, carbon dioxide levels we have. It'll, it'll take some years for that to occur. Um, the same thing applies in China, um, north of Shanghai, south of, of Beijing, are huge areas that are um, extremely low-lying. Um, right around the world, millions, literally hundreds of millions, probably thousands, um, will in fact be, be threatened if we don't get this issue under control. So somehow or other we have to, to balance, or not balance the wrong word, we have to deal with productively treating people humanely and caring for those who are threatened now, but also making sure that the actual scale of the problem doesn't keep on getting bigger and bigger, because I think what will happen is society's capacity to solve any problems will collapse as, as the economic impacts um, and the damage of climate change removes our capacity to in fact handle issues. The, uh, the issue of asylum seekers uh, is clearly a very complex issue and I'm not going to pretend to have all the answers. I doubt anybody does have all the answers and the Australian Sex Party doesn't have all the answers. Uh, but we do outright, outright reject the current situation, the PNG solution, which is not a solution. Um, it's, it's not a band-aid and if it is, it's a band-aid made of sandpaper. Um, it's, yeah, it's not right, it's a knee-jerk, tough guy solution and it's been a failure since day dot. Um, this is an issue that requires sensitivity and compassion and a far, far more humane approach. As a fundamentally civil liberties party, uh, the Australian Sex Party flat out rejects locking people up, uh, especially children who are in need of support and compassion. Um, sending people to PNG is not the answer. A lot of asylum seekers are persecuted because of their gender or sexuality. Uh, in Papua New Guinea, uh, male homosexual acts are imprisonable for up to 14 years. That's not right. Uh, Two-thirds of women uh, have experienced domestic violence and 50% uh, of women have experienced forced sex. So this is clearly not an option. Um, I'd, w I'd welcome discussion surrounding a regional solution. Uh, Australia is a large country, uh, we've got heaps of space, our national anthem even says we have boundless plans to share. Um, yeah, what, what's currently in place is not working. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say that we do need to take a far, 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 far more humane approach than what we've currently got. So. First of all, I think we should think about prevention, which uh, has already been mentioned in the context of climate refugees, and I agree with the, the importance of prevention there. But also, I think it's important that Australia not slavishly follow the US into another Middle Eastern war, um, and not that I think that that's highly likely to occur in Syria. Can you just imagine what might have happened if Mitt Romney had won the last election in the US? and? Um, you know, he rang up the Prime Minister who, you know, perhaps in a few weeks' time might be different. And you could just sort of see the possibility of Australian troops going into yet another war and, and increasing the, the sort of stream of refugees flowing our way. And I, I really think that it's important that, that we have an independent foreign policy. But that's not going to stop all the refugees coming our way. And, and the Greens want um, humane, uh, safe, legal alternatives to uh, dangerous boat journeys for refugees coming to Australia. 
and, and so we want to increase the humanitarian intake to 30,000 a year. We want to take 10,000 immediately from our region and spend some money boosting the UN High Commission for Refugees' efforts for processing in Malaysia and Indonesia. None of these things will eliminate boat journeys, but they should all reduce the pressure on boat journeys and in a humane and supportive way. Philip made some good points about uh, climate refugees and the challenges we are facing there and Tim made some good points about uh, prevention and the, the impact of regional conflicts on, on refugees and asylum seekers and I, I, I would support the things they have said. Uh, I was an early mover on lifting Australia's refugee intake to 20,000. I raised this issue in 2009. Uh, a year or so later, I noticed the Australian quoting the Greens saying we should lift the intake to 20,000. The Houston panel recommended an increase to 20,000. The good news is that that has been embraced by the government and is in fact happening. So that is a very big increase in our refugee intake and takes us to the largest intake we've had in 25 years. Uh, the bad news is that the coalition is not committed to this. If you see Joe Hockey's TV ads, you'll see them expressly saying we are going to save $1.3 billion by reducing the refugee intake back to 13750 The other thing I would say is that uh, in terms of uh, asylum seekers in Australia being in community, this is a matter that I have supported both in terms of individual cases that have been brought to my attention in my office and also in terms of the uh, debate within the government about how these things should be handled. I, I certainly accept that community uh, is far to be preferred than uh, detention in detention centres. Uh, I, don't, I don't think uh, when Adrian says that uh, we have boundless plains to share, you want to be a bit careful about that. We are the world's driest inhabited continent and the CSIRO and many others who have looked at these things uh, would, would regard what Adrian was saying about that as being misleading. Thank you. Well, you might have seen my T-shirt, let them land and let them stay. That's basically what we are advocating. Um, I would continue working very hard to build the refugee rights movement as I've done now for years. I would bring a heart to Parliament and I think this is what's been very much missing, especially when we talk about asylum seekers and refugees. Um, we would also push to prosecute key politicians in the International Criminal Court for crimes against humanity committed against asylum seekers because that's exactly what's occurring as we speak. We would definitely respect international obligations under the UN Refugee Rights Convention. We would oppose all anti-refugee measures and we would initiate and also support any bills that would call for an end to mandatory detention for all offshore processing and also the PNG final solution. It is a final solution. Um, we would advocate to fly immediately all asylum seekers that are currently in, uh, that are currently in Indonesia, Malaysia and Pakistan who want to come to Australia. We would definitely increase third country resettlement in Australia of all refugees who are now in camps all over the world and keep increasing our intake until we have a fair share. Australia is very, very low refugee intake and we could definitely take a lot more. We would oppose any deportation to danger. We know people have, that have been deported back to Afghanistan and other countries have actually died. They were killed there. And I would certainly use my voice to help build the movement and it would only take a worker's wage so we can use the rest of the very nice income to help campaign for social justice and refugee rights. <laughs>